You are listening to the Real Housewives of the Kingdom podcast. I'm your host, Caroline Rogers. In this sweet space, you'll hear from women who are like you and some that are not. We will talk about how God is walking with us through the good and the hard on subjects like marriage, homemaking, friendships, ministry, parenting, and seeking God. You will also hear from me sharing what God is doing in my own heart. The enemy of our souls wants us to feel alone, and that couldn't be further from the truth. So if you are like me and need that reminder, join us as we laugh and cry together, giving God the glory through the stories of our lives. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Real Housewives of the Kingdom. This is Caroline, your host. I am really excited to have you here today. If you are new, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I hope that you are encouraged today. If you are a returning listener, thank you so much. I so appreciate you listening. And just for your encouragement to me uh, about the podcast. So thank you very much. Well, it is... December 8th, and we are in full swing of the holidays. And I had always planned to end my Quiet Time with God series on this note of Advent. So, generally speaking, I do my planning for the podcast months ahead of time. So, usually in early January, I'm praying on and making a show schedule so that I can be prepared and get my interviews and be in the word and in just time with God about each episode well ahead of time. And so I had always planned to end my Quiet Time with God series, which if you haven't listened to those episodes, go back and listen to the last three episodes. I have sweet interviews with ladies in different seasons of life, and we talk about how they prioritize spending time with God and why that's a really, really important thing. It's been some sweet episodes, but this was always kind of planned to be part of that series. And I thought, well, I think I should do one on Advent. And I prayed about and have been thinking about exactly what that would look like. And initially I thought I would do kind of a more formal, the history of Advent, why we turn our eyes back to Jesus and kind of uh, the history of the church with Advent. And Yet the Lord was kind of tugging on my heart with a different thought. I realized that last year I felt very stressed at Christmas time. I felt a little bit sad. I felt overwhelmed. Um, just at our new life circumstance, there was nothing really bad happening. It was just we live in a new city and I had kind of a lot of expectation for the holidays. I think we often, even if we are Christians and we are focusing our holidays on time with Jesus, we kind of like put so much weight on Christmas and what it might bring or even Thanksgiving or this entire holiday season. You know, we look forward to the food we're going to eat, the people we're going to hopefully see. We think about fun things we want to do with decorating our house, with baking, with seeing family and friends, with watching, you know, holiday movies and maybe getting some extra time to celebrate and relax. And really, don't we all need it? I mean, we careen towards this time of year. And it's sort of this like respite at the end of a long year where we almost get permission to celebrate. And it kind of sounds weird to say permission to celebrate, but it's almost like we need to give ourselves permission to celebrate in this world because we feel so much pressure from so many different places, whether that's pressure somebody else is putting on us or whether that's pressure we're putting on ourselves, we feel so much pressure. And so then when we are coming in view of the holiday season, we kind of think, oh my gosh, here it comes. We're going to have a minute to relax. Or <laughs> the holidays could also bring up some really overwhelming feelings. I mean, you could have feelings of sadness. You can have feelings of just overwhelm that it's already that time of the year, if you are not planning on slowing down and celebrating, the holidays bring an extra burden. And yet that is one of the reasons why people, some people dread them. And that's kind of sad too, because I do really think that God loves for us to celebrate. He loves for us to take time to turn our gaze back to him, to 
have celebrations with family and friends to celebrate holidays. I mean, when you think about the children of Israel who wandered in the desert, God commanded them to celebrate multiple times a year. They had these celebrations that they were commanded to carry out. And not only that, they also carried out a weekly Sabbath. And so I think that this holiday, this idea of holiday, even though it's very Americanized uh, kind of how how we celebrate and how it kind of starts, I don't know, like the minute pumpkin spice lattes hit the Starbucks menu, you like walk into Starbucks and you see the pumpkin spice up there. And I don't know, I think this year it was like August 28th, which I was like, isn't it still August? Oh my gosh. I can't believe we're already here. Like we're already at the holidays, you know, and often that is another thing that you think when the holiday season rolls around. Like I can't believe how fast this year went by. It seems to go by faster and faster the older we get, even though that's a really cliche thing to say, but it does feel true. But I just love the holidays. And I know that even though I continually turn my gaze back to Jesus over Christmas time, especially, and over Thanksgiving, try to focus on being thankful. There are things about the holidays that I really look forward to. And I know last year, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I was feeling still a little unsettled. You know, we're in a new city. There's a lot of changes with my family and, you know, living in different states and, There's also changes with our job and where we live now doesn't make it as easy to travel. And if you listened to our Christmas episode last year, which was episode 57, my hubby and I talked about how we used to do a lot of traveling for work and we loved that season of our lives. And we have spent Christmas actually in a lot of different cities all over the world. So we did a whole episode talking about that. If you're interested to hear where we went and what we did, go back and listen to episode 57, especially if you're looking for Christmas themed episodes. I actually have, this will be the third one uh, thus far. I did episode 16 where I talked about celebrating Christmas and kind of the tension between the Americanized Christmas and Christmas that we celebrate because of Jesus' birth and where me and my hubby kind of stand on that and just my views on that. So you can listen to that one on episode 16. And then episode 57 is the travel episode where my hubby and I talked about celebrating Christmas all over the world. So it's not like I haven't not been home for Christmas or been somewhere totally new and different for Christmas. That is definitely something I'm very used to. But I think that there was just a lot of things uh, by living here, we're not, uh, it's a little bit harder for us to travel. We live on the central coast of California and the airport situation is just a lot different than it was living down in LA. In LA, it's a lot easier to travel. It's a lot more affordable to travel. And I think I had kind of placed this ideal of, you know, we moved into a Hallmark movie, which I say that all the time about moving to Paso. And it's true. It's so cute. And there's so many cute, quaint things about being here. I mean, literally our lives are like the story of a Hallmark movie because my hubby grew up here and he hasn't been here in 31 years and we moved back home, you know, so, and I've never lived here before. So I feel like our story is kind of like a Hallmark movie um, story. And I think I had these ideals about it and didn't really address kind of what it was going to feel like to have such a change in pace. I mean, we're used to having a much, I say a much faster pace, but our lives, I mean, we are very busy with, I would say my hubby's job is probably the busiest that it's ever been. Like he works more more than he's ever worked in his life at this point. And um, it's not to say that we didn't have times where we worked a lot, but often it was uh, in the mid, there were breaks in the middle of it. So we might be on work on a TV show and we might work 20 hour days, but that TV show only filmed 
eight episodes or whatever it was. So it's so then it, you have kind of a period of stopping, or you might be on tour for a few months, but then um, and you might be working, you know, three days straight without sleep. But then you get this respite, and so that was kind of the pace that we were used to. And when we came up here, and his schedule has been pretty full uh, consistently, it's the first time we've ever really done that. And now I'm also working part time. And I started that uh, last October. So heading into Christmas, I had just started my job, and which I work at the same company my hubby works at, Daniels Woodland. I handle their social media. But I had just had these expectations of having this beautiful Hallmark Christmas in our new town, and it was going to be so wonderful. And I quite honestly wanted to use it as a distraction for what my heart was feeling and what my kind of feelings of just being unsettled and maybe a little bit sad about being away, not being able to access my family as easily as I used to. We ended up traveling like basically every single weekend last December. And I kind of felt discontent about that. I found myself kind of resenting it, even though, like I said, I love traveling. And part of my sadness was that it was hard to travel and yet we were traveling. So realistically, I know it was such a heart issue, but I kept trying to diagnose it. I kept trying to think, wow, you know, we feel so stressed because, because we're traveling every weekend. And I was kind of bummed to not experience a lot of Christmas, Christmassy things here in our new city too, because we were gone on the weekends. But honestly, we were gone doing some really sweet things. We were seeing our niece and our goddaughter do the nutcracker. We traveled down to my sister's house for Christmas and it was wonderful. We loved it, but we loved those times with those people that we love. But I found myself at the end of the season feeling worn out, feeling a little dissatisfied with my Christmas experience. It was like, um, you know, it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. You know, Christmas wasn't what I was was expecting, and I was expecting to feel better by the end of Christmas. Uh, So, you know, is there an exchange policy on this Christmas, on this Christmas thing? Um, And so, my fix it to how I was feeling was that you know, we needed to make sure that this coming Christmas, the next one, that we weren't traveling at all, that we would just, every other Christmas would be the Christmas that we travel so that we can get our rest and so that we can enjoy Christmas here at home. And not to say that it's a bad thing to manage how much you're doing over the holidays and to be really wise about your time, but this was not something I was consulting God about. This was something that I was trying to prescribe for myself how to fix what I was feeling. And realistically, I was feeling, like I said, a little discontentment, a little bit of unsettledness. There was just, I mean, a little sadness with how much work my hubby was doing. And then now I was sharing my precious weekends with other people. And so there was a lot of really, I don't know, I guess, ugly things that my heart was um, battling. And and not to say that I didn't throughout while I was kind of wrestling with these things that I wasn't trying to turn my focus back to Jesus every time that I felt it. But I definitely noticed how I was like, well, the next Christmas, it's going to be different. And so I was sitting there and I was, you know, figuring out what our December might look like and what are we going to do for Christmas. And, and I felt like I heard the Lord say, can I talk to you for a minute (laughs) about this? And I paused and I realized, oh my gosh, I, I really don't think I consulted the Lord about my plan for how to fix my quote unquote Christmas. And I sat a little bit with him and I prayed and I sat quiet and he really showed me that, I mean, my heart was wrong last Christmas. I was looking for Christmas to distract me from my negative feelings. And as I was thinking about it, you know, honestly, 
Christmas, a lot of people feel negative things at Christmas, realistically. Like at, at current, I have some really good friends who this Christmas, they they had parents last year and this year their parents are both gone. I have friends who whose family and um, people that they love have been diagnosed with really hard diseases. I have friends who have moved and are feeling sad and lonely. I have friends who've lost jobs. There's all of these things that really, I mean, those kind of things are no respecters of persons or holidays. It's not like these things take a break because it's the holiday, you know? These things kind of just come. And honestly, when I was thinking about the children of Israel in the desert and God commanding them to celebrate, I mean, they obviously had hard things too. And I kind of wonder if God set up these things at certain intervals to remind them to celebrate and remind them of his goodness continually, because we do have a tendency to try and prescribe our own cure for how we're feeling and what we're doing. And we have a hard time remembering to turn our focus back and take a moment to celebrate despite the hard things. Hey Hey guys, guys, it's Kevin and Caroline Rogers. Rogers. As you probably know by now, we love our marriage and are so passionate about giving others the tools they need to truly have a joyful marriage. It breaks our hearts to know the divorce rate, whether you are a Christian or not, is 50%. Yikes. We also know that nobody gets married and hopes to have a divorce. Exactly. This is why we feel God has given us the motivation to equip as many couples as possible before walking down the aisle. On our 20th wedding anniversary, we launched an online premarital course. We share our own experiences as well as what God's Word says about marriage. In it, we go over five cornerstones of a healthy God-honoring marriage and give you tangible tips on how to walk in it. You'll have over five hours of video teaching from us along with downloadable resources to take into your marriage. We have always loved our marriage and want you to love yours too. If you're getting married and would love to have some great tools to take into marriage, Join us today for the course. Hey, even if you know anyone who is getting married, be sure to share this info with them. Link to the course is in the show notes or on our website, MarriedRogersNeighborhood.com. While you're busy planning your wedding, don't forget to plan your marriage. Join Join us us and and learn learn how how to thrive thrive and and not just survive. And the other thing I was thinking about was how Mary, you know, so when Jesus came, so the first Christmas, I mean, the, the Jewish people, we were under heavy persecution from Rome. I mean, the taxes there, it was just a very cold and dark time for them, for God's people. And, you know, it had been years since there had been any major miracles and signs from heaven that God had sent. The people were uh, just still waiting in hope for the Messiah. But I mean, it was a really dark time. And we kind of equate Mary to like when she accepts being the mother of Jesus, when the angel comes to her and says, you're going to you know, you're going to have God's son and you're going to call his name Jesus and he's going to save his people from his, from their sins. I mean, this was prophecy. This is something that people had been waiting for. And so there was definitely a glimmer of hope in that. But you know darn well that that sweet virgin girl who was obviously an upstanding, humble young woman for God to have chosen her to be Jesus' mother. And yet, I mean, gosh, there had to been so much going through her head. Like, how are people going to know that I didn't go sleep around and get pregnant? How is Joseph going to know? You know, she was betrothed to be married to Joseph. And how is God going to manage all these things? And yet she said, do with me as you will. I'm your servant. Like, I will do whatever you ask me. But it's. I think we just sometimes forget the tension of the moment and that there was so much tension there. If you've ever watched the movie Nativity Story, we watch it every year. I love it. I love the just depiction of how the Christmas story is carried out. Obviously, they take some creative license with personalities and things like that, but I feel like it's still pretty right on with scripture. And I love the moment in that movie where Mary and Joseph are leaving 
to go be counted and taxed while Mary is pregnant with Jesus. And everybody is like sneering at them, giving them dirty looks. And it is just such a reminder of this moment that we all look at. We have these nativities with these beautiful angelic mother Marys with these cute little baby Jesus in her arms or in the manger. And we forget that that first Christmas was no picnic. And that first Christmas had no absence of tension. And not to mention the tension of the people, but the tension of of God coming into the world. And, you know, just even the fact that she trusted that and took God at what he said, that there's still so much unknowns. How many people will believe? Anyway, this is something that I just think is so important to remember. And this was obviously something that I knew even last Christmas. But what I was thinking about was how I was feeling tension about certain things in my life, and I was trying to cover it up. I was trying to cover up the tension or wait for it to subside, which I know we all do, and I don't think that it's a bad thing to desire to have the respite, to desire to have the release of the tension. And I mean, ultimately, that is how God designed us. I mean, He didn't design us to be having to deal with this sin. I mean, we see the effects of that all the time. I mean, our hope is in Him, and we are going to experience hard times here. And even though we know that, and even though Jesus told us that we will experience hardship here. But he said, take heart, I have overcome the world. And I don't know why, but in the middle of the tension, it's really hard to take joy. Like I think about in James where he says, count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds for the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And even though we look at our heroes of faith and think, oh my gosh, how amazing that they withstood under all of this hardship and trial and whatever, and look at their faith. And I want to have faith like David. I want to have faith like Daniel, all of these things. And yet what did they have to walk through to get to that? They had to walk through tension. They had to hold tension. And like James said, we should count it joy, which dang, that's hard. I don't want to count it joy. I want the tension to go away and I want to have a happy, happy Christmas that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And I want to feel God's spirit. I want to feel peace and I don't want to have to feel the tension. But the truth is God's promise is that he's brought us peace despite the tension, that there will be tension and That when that comes, and there will be moments of release and relief, but he will give us peace in the middle of that tension. But we can't place our hope in other things. We can't try to cover it up. We can't think, well, finally, when this tension releases, then I'll be able to be joyful and serve God here where I'm at. We can't do that. We have to have a heart of praise. And, you know, I really love how after Mary gets told that she's going to have Jesus, she responds with this song. You can find it in Luke 1, 46 through 55. And as I read it, I want you to picture not this angelic Mary who sees the redemption of the world through this baby. But I want you to listen to her words in her heart with the thought of a woman who had a whole lot of unknowns ahead of her, but a woman who knew and trusted her God. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And I just love this because this is a reminder that I consistently need to remind myself when things are tense, when things are unknown, we need to respond in worship and trust. Even if 
what we're feeling isn't what is coming out of our mouths. When we are obedient and show that we're going to trust the Lord, it produces a peace in us and God meets us in in that place. And, you know, I think the other really cool thing is that while we all strive to have these lives without hardship or without difficulty, you know, we try the best we can to plan to be able to handle every kind of emergency or unknown thing. We spend our lives saving our money so that when we are too old to work, we don't have to worry and we can relax. We are constantly trying to plan for ourselves. But the truth is, is there are a lot of things in life that come that are unplanned. And how are we going to act when those happen? How are we going to act when, even though we want to have a happy heart, it's just not there. And how are we going to act when Christmas isn't what we expected? And so this was just such a reminder to me about also just how our tensions and our hardships, we can hold those at the same time that we can hold these beautiful truths and promises of Jesus. In fact, we have to. In fact, that's the only way to live. If we keep trying to cover up, if we keep trying to wait and get to the time when we're not going to have this hard thing, when we're not going to be so busy at work, when we're not going to feel unsettled, then we will live our lives constantly striving and never truly resting. I don't know that this side of heaven that we won't ever experience tension and hardship. And so and it, no matter how small the hardship is, I mean, it could be that your car broke down and now you have a huge car bill to pay and it's Christmas and you have to take care of presents and all of these things. I mean, things just come up all the time. I know I personally needed the reminder and I needed to really kind of wrap my brain around the fact that it's okay if there's tension. It's okay that there's things that are unsolved and unsettled. That is what the hope of Jesus brought. That is why we need a savior. You know, I love Oh Holy Night. It's so beautiful. First of all, just the musicality of it is beautiful. But I love the line, a thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. And aren't we weary? <laughs> Don't we need the hope of Jesus this Christmas? I know I do. And so I hope that this episode has encouraged you. I hope that as you consider Advent, as you consider turning your eyes to Jesus this holiday season and remembering why we celebrate, I hope, first of all, I hope that you'll celebrate. I hope that you will really truly enjoy the celebration, even in the midst of the hard things, even in the midst of the things that aren't quite figured out or that make you sad. I hope that you will celebrate with the knowledge that Jesus came for all of that. And Jesus gave us Christmas to celebrate him and remember that there is hope despite all of the things that aren't quite worked out yet. And I also hope that you will be able, like me, to figure out how do we work out this holding of the thing, the tension of the good and the hard things and lean into Jesus, holding them both, being able to be joyful, leaning into his peace and just living with joy, not because of our circumstances or because everything worked out right. That kind of that's not even true joy. When you're happy because your circumstances are good, that is a shaky ground to stand on, my friend, because your circumstances, I guarantee you, will change. They will change until we walk into the doors of eternity. They will continue to change. So we can't depend on that. We can't look for happiness in our circumstances. We have to learn to hold the good and the bad in the midst of life and celebrate, not because everything is perfect now, but because we know the God who is the author and perfecter of our faith. And like it says, the prophecy in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, which was written like 700 years before Jesus was born. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. 
and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So I don't know about you, but this Christmas, I am going to preach the gospel to myself like the worship song says when I need to hear it. And I am going to not despair when I have moments of tension, but continually turn my eyes back to Jesus, enjoy the celebrations, trust him for what he's put in front of us. Just so you know, we are traveling <laughs> again this December that we uh, we really did feel like there were things that we needed to do and people that we wanted to love on. And that was truly our heart. And honestly, I have so much peace about it. And this was after this surrender to the Lord of realizing that I was trying to fix my feelings last year. And really he, he is the only one that can do it. And he did. And I just wanted to share that with you. So I am going to close in prayer for all of us for this season. Thank you guys again for listening. Lord, I come to you right now and I just thank you so much for this podcast. Lord, I pray that my words would encourage those who need to hear them, Lord, that they would hear your words through this podcast, Lord, that they would hear your truth. Lord, I pray as we enter this really busy season for those who are weary, for those who need a respite, who need a celebration, Lord, help them to hold these good and hard things in tension and not allow that to stop them from celebrating and from honoring you and for giving you the glory and leaning in to your heart, Lord. We just pray for those who don't know you, who have not heard of your beautiful gift that you've given to us. I pray that we can all be conduits of your love to the hurting world. And Lord, we just ask you all of these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, friends, that's it for today. I'm so thankful you joined us and hope it spurs you on to encourage someone else. You can find and interact with me at Real Housewives of the Kingdom on both Instagram and Facebook and my website, marriedrogersneighborhood.com, which is linked in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would really appreciate if you would rate and review the podcast wherever you are listening. Just remember, we are in this together. God loves you and you are not alone. See you next time.